welcome or welcome back to a game of fangs and thrones my name's hannah and this is my june wrap up now if you've been watching my vlogs or even the june tbr video you'll know that i've been reading the books that i've got sent from my subscription boxes now i i have three subscription boxes that i pay for myself i have a luma crate fairy loot and boot box club and I've read 11 books, Mis um, mostly fantasy because that is the genre that I read most often anyway. And mix of adult and young adult I would say. Two, uh, one day enough, two going into the unhaul box. So we'll just quickly talk about the two that are in the unhaul box. So first one is Shielded by... Kaylin Flanders. There's nothing technically wrong with this book. I was just bored reading it, um, which is a shame because it, on paper, it is what I like in a fantasy. It's what I would call classic fantasy. Uh, we follow a second-born royal who has to hide her, her own magic because of a um, because of a legend where the second, if the second-born child of the royal family has magic they will go crazy and kill the heir um but that happens but i would have liked i don't know what it is about this one that i didn't like um i did write a review but the book's up there and i can't be bothered to get it um so this came out at a low three star on corpile and I, it's only going in the unhaul box because i'm not going to be not going to read it and then the other box in the unhaul is my dnf the only reason why this has a bookmark in it is because my sister's reading it and if you saw the vlogs you'll know that this is her her area um i got to a page 100 and gave up i was bored well not bored i was just struggling to get into it because i can't read books about the war i can read books set in wartime but i can't read war books um so i'm not going to give a full review on this one or even write it because it's not fair to the book because it would be a low rating because it's not my thing anyway but we'll grab the review book because we have the books I actually enjoyed this month on the whole this has been an interesting experience because I found some books that I really enjoyed that I didn't think I would uh, so we'll just go in order of the order I read them. So second, I read the, not this one, the other paperback, <laughs> The Supreme Lie by Geraldine McCoffrian. Uh, this is the story of Gloria, who was a 15, who was the 15 year old maid to the country's ruling politician, Madame Suprema. Uh, the country is in a state of panic because it is flooding, it's been raining constantly, I mean, for us, that's just an English summer, but you know, uh, Alf Alfia is not England, and it doesn't know how to cope. Um, and they, so, Gloria, as a 15-year-old, is thrust into a world of politics and adults, and she is made by the Suprema's husband to imitate and copy the, and um, pretend to be the Suprema while they figure out what is going on and trying to, trying to resolve the conflict. Uh, there are dogs in this, and we actually see things through some of the dog's perspective, and it's so sweet, and it's a bit of lightness to what could be a very harrowing read. Um, it is a, it, the plot is probably a little bit predictable, and there probably are plot clues that I missed, but that didn't take away from the enjoyment, which was a nine for me. Um, it did lag in the middle, but honestly... I still read it in two sentences. <laughs> and the writing, I have to talk about the writing choice because it, it works so well for this type of story. It, the character, yes I know she's 15, she does read a little bit childlike, but in terms of how the world is built and everything else, the childlike, the childlike writing adds a bit of sinisterness to it that works especially when you're reading through the dog's perspectives. Um, Gloria is such a sweetie, she 
she's changing the perspective of the Suprema without realising it because she's obviously the Suprema is obviously a bit hard nosed, she's um looking at figures rather than people, whereas Gloria is very people focused and the ending is just so sweet. Um I'll not give it away but it is a happy ending even though there are, you know, what happens to the dogs. But you know there is that. Um, any trigger warnings or anything, unless I can see them specifically, um, you're best off looking at Goodreads, just because I don't tend to get triggered by well, anything really. Um, next I read the... oh, and this got four stars if I didn't mention it. Uh, this is another book box club book. Uh, this is The Outlaws Scarlet and Brown by Jonathan Stroud. Four stars. Uh, it hits the ground running and it's more fast paced than I thought it would be for it being a western dystopian style book. Um, I've wrote in the no in my little review that it's mad, mild mad mad max vibes but it works. Uh, this is set in England and it has reverted back to the traditional seven kingdoms um, that were real I believe. Uh, there is a map so we have Scotland, Northumbria, Mercia, Wales, Anglia, Wessex and Cornwall. Um, obviously Scotland and Wales are countries in their own rights, but you know, we'll go with it. Um, so we follow Scarlett, who is kick-ass and takes no prisoners. She has a bit of a history that we don't really know about, but as this is a series, I'm hoping that we learn more about her as it goes on. Um, and then Albert, he's a proper little cinnamon roll. He's so innocent and naive, and it's brilliant. He's so like, whereas Scarlet is very closed off, he is a little bit more talkative, he wants to know what's going on. Um, he doesn't get sarcasm, which is really funny. Um, and I didn't really get an emotional reaction, which is why you didn't get a 10 in enjoyment, but did get a 9 as well. Um, it got eight, nine, so the writing got a six because, to be honest, I didn't, I didn't really think much of it, and there were times where I was getting confused who I was reading from. Then, is this one next? Nope, it was the bright and the pale, which is this pretty cover here, and as you can tell by the pretty cover, this is a fairy loot book, and this got three stars, a higher three star than shielded, which is why this one is staying and the other one's not. Uh, this is a solid three star, you know, it's middle of the road. For a debut it is brilliant, but as if it was a, um, if it was a established author it wouldn't be as enjoyable, I don't think. Uh, but it is, I am interested in the sequel. Uh, but this it follows the story of, not that side, uh, it follows the story of Val of Valeria, who is the who is a seventeen year old and the one of the only non survivors of the big freeze and incident that happened in her mountain village. And it also deals with some religion and champions. Um, to be honest, I like going. I think with this one, you are best off going into it blind. But it does draw on Russian folklore a little bit. And while I the plot was a bit a bit predictable and there wasn't enough world building for me personally. I was still intrigued to find out the roles each character play in this and the interaction between the, anta the main antagonist and Val is brilliant. If I think the main antagonist should have been in the story more for it to be a bigger impact but I am intrigued to see how this duology concludes and she and as this is a debut and try not to be too harsh <laughs> but I did like it the enjoyment was an 8 and as mentioned it got a 3 star from the coal pile system next I read Shadow War we've already talked about that one then we have Master of One by Jada Jones and Danny Bennett another fairy loot and this one was a very high 4 star it had a couple of 10s it um, a nine in there and a few in the rest were eight. The this is the series, this is a high fantasy I would say that follows a ragtag bunch of characters in the vein of Six of Crows, but these characters are fey relics and they are have been summoned by our our main character, Rags, who is a thief, 
to try and stop a war from brewing and each character you know who they are going in because you are in the synopsis you are given a description of each each relic and i'm going to pause you now so i can charge my camera a little change in camera angle while the camera charges while i film but anyway so what was i saying oh yes master of one so on the cover here we have rags and shining talon and they they are so sweet those two uh, but rags is sent by the sorcerer the back the very creepy guy and he is when rags is sent into this challenge the main first half of the book is rags getting through this maze type character uh, maze type area obviously we know he passes um because it does say he because it does say he um he does find the the six other well five other relics including rags and it is just beautiful we have these um i'm just reading my notes here because i did read yeah but so it's a such an inventive take on what can be a typical storyline you know it's a thief he's going we're following a thief type character he's going to learn about himself he's going to grab some friends along the way but what makes this book so fun is that we have animal companions and these animal companions are kind of clockwork type creatures we have a we have one that's what her what she is called and she's a giant lizard and she's so cute and then we have two who is a cat I think three is a bird I think and then I can't remember what four is uh, but absolutely adore it and I hope there's I hope there's more to this because I want to see what I want to see what happens and what the great paragon is and I really don't think that we've seen the last of our sorcerer friend Maureen. I really don't. Um, yeah, so the atmosphere and setting is quite typical, what I would say, for fantasy YA, but it is well done. It's a case of keeping it simple and sticking to what you know. Um, and yeah, it, even though it is, I'd say it's a plot driven book because there is an overall plot and you know where it and you can kind of guess at some of the aspects of it it is the characters that tell the story so we have a distractingly handsome fake prince who's been asleep for centuries who is shining talent and he and rags and him are just brilliant uh queen's guard deserted with more honor than common sense daughter of a disgraced noble family who hits first and asks questions later i liked her uh, a deceptively sweet-natured prince and a member of the underground resistance neither trusting nor trustworthy and of course rags uh, now the sweet-natured prince and this could be because of the fact that one of the authors was going through chemo and breast cancer um, treatment while they were writing this but the sweet-natured prince does have a physical disability where the I can't remember which side it is but one of one side of his body is withered and he is in immense pain and he is and he has learned how to deal with that despite people wanting to give him too much help and I, I liked I liked that aspect of it um it's just a very pretty book with some very pretty characters and then we have all our hidden gifts now this was my absolute this is a new favorite uh, this got tens it got three tens the rest were nines so it came out at five star and this follows Maeve who is just an unassuming girl at first she's a bit of a troublemaker she can't she doesn't really seem to fit in at school she can't really concentrate in, in uh, I think it's Northern I can't remember if it's Northern Ireland or Southern Ireland but it's Ireland um, and it's a perfect book for pride because LG now let's see if I can get this right. LGBTQIA plus representation and rights play a big part in this book, but I don't think I don't think it is I don't think it's own voices, but I could be I could be wrong. I haven't I haven't looked it up. 
Um, but this is the story of Maeve. She's sent to the Jockey, which is so brilliant because it reminds me of Matilda. I think that's actually mentioned in the book as well. Um, to as punishment for losing her temper or some misdemeanour in school, and she is sent to clean out this cupboard. Um, she finds some tarot cards that inexplicably she is drawn to and she finds a talent for it. She reads for her ex-best friend through peer pressure of the other girls in the school and a strange card appears. Now, I'm not going to tell you much more because it is a bit of a mystery as well as, every, as, well as a story of acceptance. Uh, but basically, the after having her cards read, the girl Lily disappears and Maeve feels incredibly guilty for that but while the police are trying to find Lily, Maeve becomes friends with Lily's brother Rory. He comes out to her as genderqueer or I think it's described as bisexual in the book but he is, he dresses, he, I don't want to say cross dresses because I think that's the wrong word but he dresses feminine as well as masculine and asks her and asks Maeve to call him Ro. And then there's also a Philippine Fiona who was first generation Filipino Filipina Irish. Her parent, her mother is Filipino Im immigrant, and she's dealing with xenophobia, racism, and stere stereotypical expectations of girls like her. So, for this being a 395 page book, it packs a lot into it, and it does pack a quite emotional punch as well. Um, the antagonist in this one, he isn't, um, he isn't overly evil, um, there's nothing special about him, you don't realise he's the antagonist at first, but what makes him scary is that he's the kind of person you could encounter on a street and not realise he has a, a way about him and he is the, in terms of power, he is the exact opposite of Maeve, so while they're trying to solve that, there's also the mystery of where these cards came from. Um, Maeve uncovers a mystery, uncovers what happened to the previous owner of the cards and tries to set that right. And then obviously there is a little bit at the end with the sort of wrap up, I would say, where they all have to, where the characters involved have to deal with what happens next. I know this is. I think this is a standalone, but I'm hoping for more books just like this. My real world witchy, but my real world witchy books, as I'm calling them. This is. Uh, I did say this was a book box club, didn't I? Yeah. Uh, then we have do, 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 the Unbroken by C. L. Clark. This is the start of a new adult fantasy series and it is a solid start and a solid debut. Now with adult books I do tend to read them slower um, just because of the nature of the world building and the writing style is often a little bit more complex than my YA uh, but each character because this is split perspective between Turin, our soldier and Luca our princess type royal character um, and this did not go in the way I was expecting. Um, it's a little bit more political, but the politicalness is balanced out by a couple of very well done fight scenes. Um, but I do think that this is a good start and I will be reading the rest of the series if I can find it, if I remember. Um, so it is a four star. And it does have um, female female romance and Luca it is implied that she is bisexual or at least um, at least attracted to more than one gender um, but I do like the relationship between Luca and Turin nothing is easy for these people for these women um, but what I'm interested in is how they relationship progresses because there is betrayal in this book by both sides and um, a little bit of magic that's starting to come into it and it is a desert setting which is always nice to read when it's cold which in England is most of the time uh, so women are given 
positions of power in the army as well, which is nice. Torian herself is a lieutenant, although I do think that that was just a pity, a pity promotion because they needed someone to control the band of conscripts and what better to promote one of their own. Uh, but the general, Torian's boss, is also female and the there are a lot of females or at least presenting females on the council that Luga sits in on as well. Um, so yeah, this got eight. The, in, the enjoyment was a seven because it did lag in places and I did find myself getting a bit like, mm, okay. Uh, but the intrigue was nine. So when I, was in, when I was reading it, I was intrigued to see what happens next. So I think I just wanted to know more about the magic. Um, then we have this golden flame which gives me major Grease vibes. Grease the country, not Grease the movie. I think it's because of the how the characters are drawn with the with how they wear their chitons, I think they're called. Uh, but this is an interesting one in terms of the fact that we do have LGBTQ plus representation in here and we also have disability rep. Our main character's brother is gay and has really bad vision. I think in modern day he would be he would be classed as legally blind but he can see some things I think he's really badly short sighted. They call it low vision. Um, and other than the two non MCs, there's no romance in this book. It is a it is a friendship book following Karis, who is a human, trying to break free of the scriptorium who have essentially enslaved her to find so, find the automatons and reawaken them and then we follow and then we follow Alex who is an automaton and Karis accidentally wakes him up. At first she sees him as a way off the island but as she as both characters realise and learn about the other they do become friends and it is a very sweet bond. Um, it didn't didn't drag at all which is strange. Not in the bad way just there's always a point where there's a lull and I think it's too big. Um, and every character did feel essential to the plot but I didn't really understand the villain. He just seemed, kind of seemed plonked in there just to me just because we need a villain. Um, but yeah I don't know what to say about this. I didn't love the writing. I was getting confused between who I was reading from at parts but it is a and it is a good but it is a good and solid start to a debut career. I want more. I um, that's what I've wrote I want this is I want more of this world and these characters. The the world building could have done with some work but I'll take simple world building over excellent characters any day and a good plot which was this. Uh, then we have The Space Between World by Micaiah Johnson. I think I'm saying that right. Uh, this is a, a sci-fi thriller that is quite closed off and it works like, closed in terms of location and it is it works so well for the storyline um, but there were a few instances of um, where I was confused because it's the same characters um, because this is a multiverse story with doppelgangers and a few instances of I was where I was confused which world I was in and which versions of it, which characters I was reading um, but the writing was beautiful it got so many emotions out of me it's one of those ones where it fits the character um, and I la do like how it just deals with one location and it is the it follows Kara as she traverses these multi this multiverse because she's, I don't want to say lucky because I think that's the wrong word, but she is in a position where her pre where out of 380 realities she can visit 372 and she's pretty much dead in all but eight of these multiverses and obviously one and some of, most of that is through natural causes because she lives in a slum and it isn't exactly hygienic or a safe place for her to grow up. Um, but one of her doppelgangers is killed in mis is killed in ex uh, 
seemingly mysterious circumstances and it is a race against time to find out what happened to her and if she, to that to stop Oganga and if Arkara can stop it. Um, but there is themes of identity and I think a bit of nature versus nurture. Um, our main antagonist could have been used a bit more I think. Um, I understand enough of his motivation and why he's doing it and um, why he's doing what he's doing but I don't feel the way I'm, I think I'm supposed to about that I'm just like oh okay <laughs> um, and I'm no expert obviously I'm in a position where I haven't had to think about this but I do think it it does touch on colonization as well as um, disguised as business and business growth um, just towards the end when the main when the main antagonist's master plan is revealed it doesn't sit it sits a bit like colonization and it's like mm, people are going to go away go along with this because it gets something out of it but it's like we're kind of doing something to the to the, the population here the native population and it's not quite right and um, so i described this as like a little a uh, cosy little thriller set within a multiverse, a strong enough introduction to the author that has made me interested enough to look for more, because I do believe that this is a debut. And then the last book that I read is Winter's Orbit, I actually finished this last night, and it got 10s across the board apart from Intrigue, um, which got a 9.5, so that gives it a 5 star the second five star of the month actually so i've done the fairy loot and the luma crate no fairy loot luma crate and book box club you have done well uh, but anyway this is a debut space opera and it's not a high sci-fi in the sense that you need a degree to understand what's going on um there is a trigger warning that i do think is important to mention um, one of our main characters, Jainan, was in a, um, his previous relationship was a bit abusive. You do get hints of it at the start and then it does um, become clear towards the end. So if that is something that you are wary of, just double check. Um, this might not be for you because it is, it isn't explicit and it does happen in a flashback and it is the previous partner. But KM, our new partner, he doesn't understand why Jane won't tell anybody about it and why Jane thinks it's all his fault. So just be aware of that going in. So this is a five star. Everything about it was beautiful. Uh, we have reptilian animals, which was a nice surprise. Uh, there's a six legged bear in here that has scales instead of fur, and the birds want to kill you. <laughs> and that is quite inter that is quite interesting. And the the only thing I want to say about this one is my intrigue dropped by a point by like half a point because there was a because there was a lull in the story in the main murder mystery plotline where I wasn't that bothered if to find out who the end who it was because it was more focused on Jane and Jane and, and KM's relationship. And um, there is one sort of sexy scene at the beginning of the book, but it doesn't go very far because the both both characters don't know each other that well, and obviously Kiem knows that Jainan is grieving um, for his dead husband Tam, which is the major plot of this book. Um, it's not a spoiler; it tells you in the plot in the <laughs> it tells you in the synopsis. Um, Prince Tam is uh, dead. They think he may. Have, the authorities think he may be, have been murdered, and because of various treaties and whatnot, uh, Kiem and Jainan are married fairly quickly. And it's a story of them getting to know each other, as well as resolving um, what happened with Tam and securing the alliance between the um, between the planets. And how that is done is beautiful. And this author is British. There is a line in here that made me giggle so much, and I think it's because where I am and where Yorkshire is, where 
uh, Everina Maxwell is from isn't that far away, I think it's about an hour on the train and it is necking and if you don't know necking it means snugging or kissing and making out I think um, it's a phrase I haven't heard in ages and it just made me howl so five stars the world building and just different culture building that went into this was beautiful they have a the iscats do have a which is what ta, uh, which is what Tam was and KM is uh, Tam and KM were both prin are both princes um, and they are princes of the Escat Empire they are related to the Emperor um, I think it's never it's not clear how um, Tam is related but he is he was KM's cousin and KM is like the grandson great grandson or something of the Emperor um, but they have an interesting take on how to proclaim gender if you are female and present as female and you recognise your gender as female, you would wear slate or metal. Um, most people wear that in the form of earrings or jewellery of some sort. Uh, if you identify as male, you wear wood. So again, like a wooden bead or a wooden necklace or a wooden bracelet. And then if you are non-binary or you don't really feel like you have a gender, you wear glass or nothing. So I can't see problems with that already. I have glass. My glasses, but I don't think they count. Um, so that got five stars. Um, so I'm quite impressed. I read 11 books, as I've said. DNF'd one, but that's not because it was a bad book. It was just not something I would pick up anyway. But that's the nature of the game with subscription boxes. You know roughly what you're getting in terms of what you sign up for because Fairy Loot Fairy Loot and Illumicrate both advertise that they do young adult fantasy, whereas Illumicrate does sort of stray into the adult or sci-fi genre at times, which is a nice surprise, a nice change of pace, because if you can tell by my shelves, we have fantasy, well, magic realism, fantasy, 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 uh, fantasy, a bit of Greek history, myths, legends, it could technically be fantasy I suppose and there is a lot of fantasy on my shelves I am mainly a fantasy reader so these book boxes do give me a chance to explore different genres and I'm not going to leave my book box books well my uh, book box does YA middle grade uh, fantasy I would say um, but to be honest I just like them for the bits we get with them as well and it's a decent price and we get signed books um, so I'm not going to leave my uh, subscription books to pile up I don't think because they are actually quite interesting <laughs>